Okay, although I don't say it very often, in, in these videos I'm really not trying to instruct anybody on how to do things. I'm just doing them my own way, and my own way may not be the best way, or the right way, or a good way. It's just, it's my way. So that's what you're watching. I'm not suggesting you do things the way I do them. So so here on the schematic, uh, so, so the issue is where to hook up a meter to monitor the results of doing the alignment. So the volume's going to go up and down at the speaker. Maybe I want to monitor the speaker output. Okay, a couple problems with that. One is the speaker's going, so you got to listen to it while you're doing it. The other one is this is got a B minus bus with a uh, isolated chassis through a capacitor. So the instructions are hook up your signal generator with the uh, uh, grounded lead going to the B minus in the radio. The next instruction is uh, hook up your uh, meter, hook up a meter across the voice coil of the speaker. So if you look at the diagram here to see how things are done chassis-wise in that, the speaker is completely isolated in this diagram, which means you could hook anything you like up to it any way you like. It's not going to influence back into the radio. You're not going to set up a short circuit or something weird like that. And that's what the schematic shows what you actually see on the speaker can be a little bit different. So I'm going to have to get my close-up camera to show this. But here's the speaker, of course. And there's two, uh, two, two uh, wires coming to it. There they are. And they're coming from the transformer right here, the output transformer. So this is the isolated speaker circuit, if you like, not grounded to B- minus or the chassis. But you know, the frame of the speaker is Actually, it's not bolted. They've used some uh, really lousy way of, of, of connecting it here. But here it is, metal metallically connected into the chassis. So the frame of the speaker is certainly at chassis potential. What have they done with these? So I'm going to get the close-up camera, and we're going to have a look. Uh, as soon as I can find uh, where, where Where is the close-up camera? So, oh, oh. <laughs> it's way over here. OK, come on, camera. Come on down here, and I have the feeling the focus may not be so appropriate. Yeah, I'm going to just fix the focus here so we're up a little closer to things. Give me just one moment. This won't be painful at all. Go a little closer like that. Okay. You can see one terminal there and the other terminal here. You see a difference. So this terminal, it looks like copper. Copper all the way to the frame rivet. And this other one, it has a black material, an insulative material. So what they've done is, they've shorted one lead of the uh, voice coil to the frame. They shorted to the frame, it's shorted to the uh, chassis. So, you know, even though the schematic says this isn't there, it is there. There is a ground there. And this presents an issue if I'm going to use grounded test equipment, which was my intention. Because I will be putting a ground through my equipment. I'd be putting one on the B- minus and the other one on the chassis. But they aren't the same thing. They're separated by a capacitor. Well, once that connection's made, they're no longer separated by a capacitor. Would that really throw the radio off? Maybe not. If you were to hook your ground without looking, you hook your ground to the ungrounded side, I think you wouldn't have any sound coming out of the speaker. You would have shorted the output, I think. Maybe shorted it through, this, through the uh, capacitor here, this capacitor. Too much to think about there. So I could take my, uh, uh, my elastic meter, which is not grounded, and I could hook that up, and there's no concern, except i got to look at a digital readout, and that's a lousy for doing this kind of stuff. You, you really want an indicating meter. Like you can see subtle little variations in it, not, not numbers flashing at you. So another alternative, then, is to not do what they're suggesting, not listen to the speaker at all, but instead monitor the ADC voltage with a voltmeter. Now why haven't they suggested that in here? 
And I think the reason is that a lot of shops, small shops, small operators, this is hard to believe, wouldn't have a high impedance meter. They wouldn't have one of these guys. They wouldn't have a, a VTDM. They just have a cheap handheld meter. And uh, so with the cheap handheld meter, and the, 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 today's standards, this is a cheap handheld meter here. Um, you can hook that up, no problem. No, it doesn't have to give any kind of special instructions. So maybe that's what they're envisioning here is going to go on. And they don't want the cheap, now this one doesn't qualify, a cheap low impedance meter hooked up in the AVC system anywhere. Either on the AVC side of this uh, isolating resistor here, the 2.2. So you're going to get on the high impedance side of this. And I'm going to talk about that just for a second, high impedance. Or if you put it on the low impedance side, well, you're, you're hooking up right on the bottom of the coil here. Maybe you're going to throw things off in here. If you hook a low impedance meter here, you're going to throw the AVC off. That's what you're trying to read. I don't know. Now, I have a high impedance meter. This guy's 10, 10 mega ohms on DC. You can see this resistor is 2.2. So 10, 2.2, can't make that much difference. And we can also check. We can we can attach, detach, and see what the radio does, just to be sure. But if I can do it, it's much better, I think, in this case, for me to monitor this voltage because I will hook the negative lead up to the B minus again. So I have the two uh, grounded devices hooked up to the same line in the radio. That's my plan. I'm gonna do. Okay, let's just keep it rolling here. Keep it rolling. So we're gonna. This is gonna be a negative voltage. The uh, radio will develop a negative voltage for ABC purposes because that's how they wired the detector. So this guy would go to a grounded point. This is for my voltmeter here. Grounded point, isn't that just terrible language? Doesn't doesn't mean much of anything. We we'll go to the B minus. A nice a nice B minus point. Here's one here. Nice means I can put a clip on it and a clip look at this big honking bare clip I'm using. The clip won't have a propensity to wander off somewhere. As these things often do can have a mind of their own and it snaps suddenly somewhere. That's not going anywhere. You also tug on it a little bit. Yeah, see that? Did you see that just hop there a little bit? It's a little hard to see from down where you are. Stand up and have a look. Okay, so that guy's okay. Now the ground for my signal generator, which I have warmed up, go in the same place. So I'm going to clip it on the same clip, in fact. And then this arrangement here is clipped onto pin 7 of the mixer tube, as instructed. This is just going to wander right off. this all in the way. I'm going to try to align the radio uh, upside down. I have to go through a couple of holes here and I need a tool to do that. Now, let's try this one. So I'm checking to see the size of the slug. Hmm what's in there. What is down in there? Is it a screw? Uh, we don't know. Well, I hope it's not a screw. It should be a... Anybody see in there? How about this one? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna see anything. Okay, let's look at the top of the radio here. It's a slot. Well, that 
makes things a little more complicated. Look at how wide the slot is, eh? And the other one's the same, I'm sure. So there's no there's no working through from the bottom. We have we have to do this radio with it on its side, which is a, a bit of a hassle. Let's go on the other. I can't go on the other side. This is here. Oop! Oh, turned it on. I think I can do it the other way. Let's just see what happens here. It's actually fairly, fairly secure. It doesn't look like it, but it is actually. Okay, all these wires now are in trouble. They've all flopped around. I know what these radios will do as soon as you're not looking. They'll, they'll take an opportunity to turn you into a monkey. Okay, now I need a tool to go in there. Um, just move my camera out of the way here. Who's going to do it? These are probably too wide to fit through the, uh, the hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too wide. Okay, this guy's built for the job. He has a nice wide screwdriver y thing. Oh, he goes in. Good. This is a good tool. We got the handle to give you some leverage so you have a little bit of strength. This is wide and fairly thick. So it doesn't it doesn't uh, load up. It doesn't turn into a spring, a torsion spring. Got the tool, got the signal generator going, got the radio ready, got the capacitor open, got the pointer in the right place. I don't have the yeah, capacitor. It's supposed to be open all the way, which it is. don't have the AVC meter hooked up yet. Okay, so now we need to get this lead. Yeah, we need to find the spot. We need to find the spot. We need to find the spot. So the spot is, I'm going to go on the outside of the 2.2, which, which might present problems. First of all, the 2.2 is buried way down in there. Point two is connected to this resistor. That's, a, that's another mystery part. That resistor. I won't go into that. Let's not go into that. Just let's just pretend I didn't even say that. That there's a resistor I can't find on the schematic. But it sure looks original. Okay. So if I clip on there. This, you know what we'll do is we'll start, and I will just go like this, and we'll find out if it's messing up the radio. Okay, that sounds good. All sounds good. Voltmeter's on. Radio's not on. Equipment's on. We're dialed up to 450 kilohertz right now. Plug it in. Using the ABC means using the uh, setting the volume is unimportant. I'm going to turn it up a little bit so we can hear something. There we go. She's on there. The dim bulbs flashed up briefly. Now we might just hear the uh, signal generator. Lots of 
funny noise, but let's see if it's just receiving that. Ooh. I don't like the hummy sound, but the hummy sound might just be from this equipment being connected. I'm not going to sweat over that. Just listening to what we're hearing. If I touch this against the the spot, what does the radio do? Nothing. Okay, let's check our meter. Watch the meter. It should go up a little bit. There we are. That's good. Okay, I'm going to put a clip lead in there. But not with the radio operating, I'm not. Clip right here. Good, I won't go anywhere. Clip it onto the voltmeter. Back on. Yeah, I don't like the hum. Or whatever that sound is. Okay, I'm gonna tune the radio a bit and just watch and see that this doesn't doesn't move a bit. I think that's proof enough. Now we're going to kind of ignore what's coming out of the speaker. Okay, where is the IF peak? So I'm going to tune the signal generator here. Just listen to it. Uh, I think I'm st uh, yeah, the meter's out of view. Let's just listen. Pretty good. Very wide. It seems very wide to me. 455. Now, what is it supposed to be? Did it did say in here? Somewhere. Intermediate frequency is 455. There we are. We're tuned to 455. You can see that the, uh, the action's all about the meter here. Um, I'm probably going to get my hand in front of the meter. Okay, so we have enough signal. We have more than enough signal here. I'm going to try to turn down the signal or generator. Oops. A little extra noisy. That's a little too low. Okay, there we go. We don't want the signal generator too high. Peak that meter. That's the name of the game now. Starting with the uh, second IF. Okay, going in. Back I'm in. Down, up, 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 right there. Only because it's convenient, I'm going to do the bottom of the second one. You can see how somebody pushed the tool right through here, too. There we are, I'm in. Okay, now we want to do the other, the top of the radio. Didn't quite plan this part out. Trying to swing the radio around. And around. Okay. Going into the second one at the top. Okay, 
there any need to repeat it? Let's try this one and see if we can get a little more out of it. Not really. And likewise, this guy. No. That is it for that. Okay, that's great. Now, I want to switch completely. So I'm going to turn it off to the next step, which is basically aligning the dial kind of thing here. See, AC voltmeter across radio speaker voice coil. I should put a note here. Watch out! Signal generator radiate a signal to the receiver through a loop of several turns of wire. Set the generator to 1650. A C5 trimmer, that's going to be on the side of the uh, capacitor. And C2 trimmer. So this first one's going to be the uh, uh, oscillator, and then the second one is going to be the antenna. Radiate signal to the receiver through a loop of several turns. Set the generator corresponding receiver tuning capacitor setting onto the through the radio speaker. Get that. And then the last two steps are for a different model. So I don't have to do those last two steps. So it's just very simple stuff. Now, the radio is off. We're gonna we, we don't want to feed a signal in under here anymore. We still want to monitor it here. still want to read the voltage there. Still lots of reasons to leave the radio on its side. And this now actually comes off. This comes off. That's the signal generator. I've got to put this on a coil. And I have one. Just, just up here. to the antenna. Put the signal generator on here. Yes, that's the signal generator. My position is just a little bit further away. Something like that. There we go. Okay, voltmeter still connected to the AVC. And this has survived here. Okay, now we need the signal generator tuned to 1650, wasn't it? 16, 1650. And where's the set? Set radio variable tuning capacitor to minimum capacity tuning plates fully open, which I'm sure is where it is right now. Yep, fully open. Okay, power on. And sixteen fifty. Forgot to do that. Sixteen fifty. Ooh, she's a hot she's a hot radio now. That's volume is minimum. It's zero. That's a hot radio. 1650. Hot for noise. Okay, 1650. Certainly didn't hear anything come through the radio. Let's give it a little more oomph here. Okay, and now we're going to tune to find. So it's around 16. I get up to 16. 50. I'm going to crank it up here. And I'm going to go hunting. Hunting. So to do this, I'm going to try a little metal screwdriver. Just because I don't need to guess. I'm not really guessing, but I think I know which, which one is which, but I will look. I will 
have a look here. The C2 antenna, and the smaller the smaller set is the oscillator. It's almost really always the case. So I turn the oscillator. This is a capacitor that I'm turning here. So you know, don't know which way to go. So we'll we'll go away. No, nope. how about the other way? Oh, there it is. Okay, so now we gotta watch the ABC. That was plenty strong. I'm gonna turn down the signal. Strength. Turn it down too far. So in effect, I'm tuning the radio when I'm doing this. There we go. That was easy. And the last step. C2 trimmer for maximum output. Set radio variable tuning capacitor so plates are meshed approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch. Adjust this setting slightly to eliminate any interfering signals. Radiate signal into the receiver through the loop of several turns. Set the generator to a frequency corresponding to the receiver's tuning capacitor setting. So basically they're telling you to uh, set the radio variable tuning capacitor so plates are meshed approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch. So they're, they're saying just, just turn the tuning knob a little bit. Put like that. Find a quiet spot. Not, not to be fooled. I'm gonna watch this meter for quiet. There's quiet. And then we match the signal generator to the radio. What? Way down here? I got all the way down there? Really? I got all the way down there? 14, oh, it's almost 15. Bring in the radio. I don't know how this is going to help exactly. Um, I don't know what to say about that. I don't know. It looks like it's, it's uh, it is what it is. Okay, so tune this properly to get the highest output here. Let's turn down the signal generator. Okay, tune for maximum. The heterodyne means there's another signal there. But it's, it's very low. Okay, now we're going to adjust the antenna, which is this screw here. Got a fair distance between these two things, so I think we're good. Okay, watching the meter. is it okay power off pull out the equipment let's see what we got now this is all being done with that little hunts capacitor still in there which I think is having no I think is having no effect on anything okay we'll lay the radio down Something burning in here. Is there something in there? Nope. Didn't I push this? Yeah, I did. 
Okay, put it like that. Okay, we are ready for a real test of this radio. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to turn off the signal on the generator so it can't be involved. Okay, Mr. Radio, uh, down at this end should be some stations. Just happen to have the antenna in the right angle here. I believe this is 590. Well, this doesn't help much. Hey, see, I've cleaned this all up. Yeah, sorry. Well, I'm going to stick this into the cabinet, and we're going to see what we got. Interesting how the, the shadows of the numbers end up on the back panel. It's just not particularly helpful, is it? <laughs> yeah. I would call that the cannabis effect. There we are. Now. I'm going to line up the six with the line on the back with the pointer. Make sure there's no parallax. You can see the six lines right up with the mark on the dial and the pointer's just to the left of it where 590 would be. That's ah, a big thumbs up. Very good. What about that little capacitor? I don't know. I'm tempted now to just leave it all just the way it is. So, Looks like my cabinet washing needs a little more work. We're almost done here. Fantastic. Okay, last couple things. Does the on-off switch really work? So I'm going to cut my short away. Let's just pull this out of here. So there's a visible point of separation in the circuit. I'm going to cut that short. go. You would think it'd be pull on and push off. So we're off. Power on. You can watch the dim bulbs. They're going to tell us what's happening. Along with a couple other meters. 117.2 volts. I don't think the set is on. I'm going to pull it on and we'll see what happens here. Here we go. Nothing happened. It's a broken. <laughs> really? You're going to do that? Well, that can be described as disappointing. I thought it would come to life. Off that switch would be okay. Power 
it off. Let's, let's just do an alternate test of it here. That's pretty convincing. It didn't turn the radio on. That's that's pretty darn convincing. But let's just do this. Is that switch closed? And the answer is no. And is it closed now? The answer is no. This radio has two broken on-off switches in it. Well, so I'm thinking of returning this to the curling club, and uh, so I'm taking a little bit of a different attitude towards, towards uh, what I'm doing here. A piece of wire dropped in on the radio. One thing to sell or give a radio to somebody, it's another thing to give it to an organization. It's got to be in, in good, safe working order. So probably going to have to put an additional switch, a uh, toggle switch, probably mounted on the back here. Uh, to kind of keep the riffraff from operating the radio. So we have to know enough to reach around the back. Meanwhile, the clock can be going the whole time. That's probably what I'm going to have to do. And I might as well do it now. Because is there a better time? What about a better place? Is there a better place to put it instead of on the back here? Put it on the back. I have to, I have to pile drive a hole through this card. Lots, lots of space. The antenna's here. So it's all got this whole area here. Okay. I'll think about that for a little bit. Making quick work of this. Where'd the little switch go? Really? Hmm. I thought that was big enough. That will be good. Okay, now it so happens the wires that come to this switch, I can just transfer them if I'm lucky. Let's see if I'm lucky. Is he lucky? No, I'm un unlucky already. I can't find my cutters. Junk on the bench here. The cutters have wandered off. 
Where they are right in front of my face. Okay. I'm gonna take the black and white wire here. Just making sure everything's turned off. See if it's long enough. Where's that great string tool? So, so this wire is going to be carrying all the AC power that's coming into the radio. If I should lay it just in the wrong place. Look at that, it's long enough. If I can make it, can he make it? If I lay it in the wrong place, it may result in uh, a hum in the radio. It's twisted to try to keep the uh, amount of uh, influence minimized. to the chassis. Get the impression I'm rushing? Yeah, I've been in here a long time now. It looks like I'm doing two days work in one day. The next radio that's coming in here, I'm really looking forward to working on it, so I'm, I'm kind of anxious to get this out of here. Now it's got to come through this little hole. Is it going to make it? And then, ooh, I don't think it's going to make it. Not through that hole. Is there any other way out of here? Any hole I can pop out through? pop out right down here. It's an ungrommeted hole. Through that hole. Not gonna make it. Very close. I'm gonna come through here, screws going in there. How do you get out of this radio? I can't get out. Let me out. I want to drill another hole. So if I can get it through those, that hole down there, wow, I don't know. That is a tough question. Then we come up the outside here. I'm getting into a little bit of trouble here. I have to come underneath. That's okay though. Come underneath. It would probably make it then. worth a try. It's worth a try. Gonna do it. This is 
certainly prevent any uh, hum or interference like that. There it is. Perfect. Save myself some wire. <laughs> Good. Okay, this guy's gonna go in. Oh, which way's on or off? Well, it's on either way, because it's a three pole. So I'm just gonna use two poles. I would like it to be, you know, and I can rotate it if I, if I don't like what I did. will be a rock solid. force on the switch. It's just a lever up and down. Okay, I'll tighten it up in case I want to rotate it. Bring over our wires. Rating on this switch is uh, 125 volts AC and uh, 8 amps. You can believe it. Okay. One in the middle. I can actually do a little test here to figure out which one to hook up to. Good. So let me reach around the back. I might get a surprise. They pull this radio out of the cabinet with the power on. Not going to be my problem though. And uh, I mean, the on-off switch is obviously there. I'll put some labels on it here, on and off. First of all, you know, I, I'm assuming this is an on-off switch. It's wired into kind of a weird spot. I, I'm, I, I'm going to trust the guy who did it. Okay, so the switch is in the on position. Right now. Okay, it's the upper terminal, as I thought. It's opposite to the throw of the switch. It's usually the case. This is this radio's third on-off switch. <laughs> it's a switch eater. Switch eater. Now my bench is just covered with stuff. So I find it very uh, unattractive to work when the bench gets piled with tools like this. 
but that's what happens when I start rushing. Ultimately, I'm rushing because I'm spending so much time trying to find stuff on my messy bench. solder at all. this work? Switch is in the down position. but nothing plugged into the outlet. Power off. Glock is running. Radio is not. Now flip this on if the video comes to a sudden halt. <laughs> You'll know this didn't work. Here we go. Okay, I see my uh, voltmeter just drop off over here because I'm using dim bulbs. That's it. That's 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 the ball game. Except for that mystery capacitor, which we are now in a position to experiment with. Okay, I'm gonna tip the radio up. something. Let's give it some help. A little bit of help. Uh, I'm looking for my helper. Uh, uh oh. Looking for a loop antenna. Is it not in here? It appears to not be here. Okay, I have to go find my little loop antenna. Shrill. Um, so this is not a good place to play a radio down in my shop here. But what I've done is I have an outdoor antenna and I've just connected it to this loop. Pretty simple. I just held it up near it. And that seemed to help a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. So we're ready now to cut that capacitor out of the circuit and see what happens. Turn this back up. How much does it? Oh, it's 
is good enough to do this test. Let me try one, one more way of boosting the antenna here. Okay, bit of a crazy arrangement. So all this really amounts to is a antenna from a radio and a capacitor. And this antenna has uh, two loops in it, a large one, and then a small, probably a one or two turn loop. The one or two turn loop I have hooked up to the external antenna. That's what these wires are. So I'm just feeding it into a, a one or two turns here. And the rest of this is simply hooked up to the capacitor in parallel. So I can resonate this antenna through the AM band, just like it normally would operate. So if I get the antenna signal coming in, energizing this resonant coil, it'll very, very strongly, and some of that will go into the antenna of the radio. That's a theory. Well, it's a little better. Now, okay, ready to cut that little capacitor with the radio operator. Tight in there. <laughs> okay, listen to it. I shouldn't have been afraid. That's better. Now it's out. It's out where I can get it. Okay, power on. Wider. Is it better though? Oops, so I'm reconnecting it. Just grabbing it with the pair of pliers makes it louder. So that, that's it's a signal to noise we're trying to hear here. Here, here. Here, here. I'm trying to get it to connect. Without touching it with the pliers. <laughs> it won't quite reach. I use the pliers to bring the terminal up.
sounds better with it in place. That's that's what I think. Um, so I'm, I'm going to reconnect it. Uh, Walter knew what he was doing. Okay, let's give this little guy a test. I cut him out because I tested him with my other tester. I got, I got results I didn't like. This is really the better way to test it. See what kind of leak it has in it. Okay, 50 volts. I'm watching the eye, which is a little hard to see. Let's see, let me just fix that up. Maybe. No, it's a little bit easier to see. Here we go. Right open. Right open. Hmm. Let's give it. It's a hundred volt. I think it's a. Its rating is two hundred volt. So that's just about what I was hitting it with there. In any case, seems to test sorta of okay. Maybe we'll try reading the uh, actual capacitance here on it. So this is supposed to be a 0 .005, basically, microfarad. Let's see what this guy says. 0 .005 would be 0 .005 on this scale. Watching where the eye pops open now. open. Next scale down. So it's popping open at the end of the dial. I don't think that means much. Now well, there's a spot there. That's 0 .005. So, so it's actually showing Funny, funny things there, but it was probably okay. It's probably an okay capacitor. But there's a brand new one in there now. So this green guy here. Okay. Where have I gotten to now? I think I'm at the point where I'm putting it back in its cabinet. Great. <laughs>